Welcome back to this third video in this fall video series where we are using Inventor HSM, what is CAM, right inside of Inventor. And we're actually using the two and a half axis, so it's free. So you can actually go out and you can download that. Cam.autodesk.com should be right above me here. Now, if you're plunging right into this series, there will also be the link right underneath it. Uh, that will take you back to the first video. So what we're really trying to do here is we are not just doing the how, so all the button clicks. We're also trying to talk a little bit about the why. So kind of like trying to give a little bit of tips and tricks as we're going along why you would, you would do certain things. So we are on the third video, what means that we pretty much programmed this throttle pedal um, all the way through. Uh, on the first side before we're gonna flip it over in the last video. So let's jump on the screen here and well, let's get camming. All right, so the two last things we're gonna do on this part here is we're gonna drill some holes and then we got a couple of pocket operations uh, we're gonna do in here. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out by drilling. Now, it's pretty easy inside of here because we have the drilling uh, operation right up here, right? So I'm just gonna click on that and just like if you looked at the previous videos, it's the same mentality, right? We're going through the same things. We're going and we're selecting a tool. Now, what I'm going to select for drilling here is I'm going to select uh, actually a spot drill. Now, what the spot drill will do is it will just go down like a couple of millimeters or, you know, 50 thousandths of an inch and just make a little spot so when the drill comes down that it will catch us that so it will not wander. So a normal drill is 118 degrees grind and that will not, you know, if you just go down on a piece of steel, it will kind of like wander around and not be a true hole. So that's why we go in and, and spot first to do that. So I'm just gonna go down here and take a spot drill. Now, uh, again, I said earlier, make a good relationship with your tool vendor. Uh, spot drill comes in different shapes. Um, one of the things I used to like is what is called a spot mill. So that is actually uh, a little carbide. I used to go with like uh, maybe like, I don't know, a, a 3 8 diameter or something like that. Um, and uh, you can also use that one to chamfer around with if you choose uh, to do that. So I'm just going to select this spot here. Now when I go to the geometry trap, since this is a drilling operation, um, I, I like to be lazy when it comes to CAD and CAM. It shouldn't be too hard. So I'm going to select uh, select the same diameter, right? And now I can just go in and select that. What that means is that if I go over here and I actually select, you know, these holes, you will see that it automatically select uh, the three uh, of them here. And I actually also want to spot this hole over here. So I'm just going to select that too. So you can, even though that you, you select the same diameter, that will pick the first three. And then I just click on the inside face of that hole and it will select that one uh, too. Now the fourth or uh, third tab over here is the heights tab. We've been into this one a little bit before. So be aware that there's a lot of great uh, options in here. Now the, the top height, so this is where it's going to start drilling from. It's set by default to hold top. But you actually saw that I selected down here uh, on these. So I can actually just go in and check, uh, change that. And you have this uh, neat drop down. I really like how Inventor HSM comes with that little help fly out there so you can read you know, up on, up on all the different uh, things in that little window uh, there. But I would probably just select something like model top, right? That's where I wanna start from. And then by default, it's whole bottom. Well, it's just spotting. I don't want to go all the way down. So I'm just going to select the same thing again. You can actually do that. So model top here. And then I can just type in if I want to offset it. So in this case here, I'm kind of like doing things in metric. So I can just do in the two millimeters. Uh, so I'm just going to type in two millimeters here. And it will know that because my cam is actually set up in inches here. Uh, depends on where you are in the in the con uh, in the in the world, right? Whatever you prefer. So you can just type it in if you have it. If your machine is set to inches, your 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 cam is set to inches. Your your computer, you can just write it in like I do do it here. So pretty neat. Now I also like to point out that the last tab over here, the cycles tab, you will actually see uh, when we come to drilling that we have a lot of great options in here. But I'm drilling rabbit out is fine with me. So I'm just gonna hit OK here, and now you will see on the screen we get this nice feedback. Uh, that will show us that we have uh, that we have we have spotted that off. And of course, like I showed in the other videos, at any time you can go up and if I select the setup one here, I can just go in and simulate this, right? And now I can actually play through all the different operations in here 
and get to where I want to go. But notice down the bottom here where my mouse cursor is that you have this bar. So if you just want to jump ahead, you can at any time click wherever you want and you can get uh, wherever you want to start. So if I click here, I'm at that point. If you click over here, you're at that point. So this bar down here is extremely uh, easy to navigate and, and use. Definitely be aware of that. Now, so now I'm going to drill my holes. Now, I could just go up and hit the drill uh, again and just select everything. But you actually also have another uh, trick in here. And just want to make you aware, if you right click in here, there is a lot of great options in here. And definitely take the time uh, with Inventor HSM Express here, the you know, the two and a half access, even this free, you have all these options to navigate around in here and just get, you know, there's a lot of great options. So one of the things I can do is I can go down here where it's called derived operation. And what that lets me do is I can select another drilling operation. Now, what I have done is I have literally copied my previous spot drilling operation to this operation here. And that just gives me the little advantage that now I don't have to select any geometry again because it already remembers that geometry. Like I said before, I like to uh, to be a little bit lazy. So now I'll just have to go back in here and change my, my tool uh, to uh, what I want to use. In this case here, I'm going to select just a 10 millimeter drill. Again, like I said before, uh, they come in uh, a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, sizes and shapes. Actually, I don't have a 10 millimeter in here, so I'm just going to select seven and a half, and now I can go in and edit it. And if we go to the cutter itself, we could, if we had one on the shelf, we could just go ahead here and change, you know, this so it becomes a 10 millimeter. Um, generally speaking, you have 118. That's what we call it in, in the United States. We call it Java drills. So that's kind of like the standard drills. And and by the way. Uh, you can pretty much, I mean, you can pick them up at, at a Home Depot or somewhere else and they will, as long as they say they can cut steel, they're probably pretty good. But of course, you can also go out and, and buy expensive ones. But if you're just new starting out, you know, go with, go with a cheaper option, right? So I selected my, my drill. Again, like I talked about in the first uh, video, feeds and speeds, get that relationship with the, with the tool, tool vendor. Now, the heights tab we now have to change, right? Because now it's actually going to, it's going to drill uh, through. So I'm actually just going to go down here and say uh, the model bottom. And then you can turn on drill tip through. So it knows is this may be a standard. I'm going to make this zero. Uh, it knows that this, this is a standard 118, depending on what you have in your tool library. So in this case here, when you check drill tip through, it will add that drill Taper, so you don't have to calculate that to make sure. And sometimes you prefer you you want to add a little bit of extra uh, depth just to make sure that it goes all the way through. That really depends on what you want to do. Now this is where the last cycle tab becomes really handy, because in here you can choose uh, different uh, options. So you could actually go in here. I normally used to use chip breaking. What chip breaking means is that it's kind of like the drill is just going down maybe a hundred thousands. And then it, it go rabbits up again, it goes down 100,000 rabbits up again, 100,000 up again. So it clears the chips out of there so they don't get all jammed in, in, the, in the hole as it's drilling through. It really depends on how deep you're drilling. If you, if you have a 10 millimeter drill and you drill through a 5 millimeter plate, you would never consider doing that. But if it's like, you know, um, three or four times the diameter of the drill is maybe where you want to start to, to consider that in, in the depth relation. Thing. This is also something depending on what your machine is capable of doing. Uh, so that depends on, on that. Look at your, your machine manual and that will give you, you know, some indication for that. But this should take care of actually drilling uh, these holes. Now, of course, this big diameter uh, is a little bit bigger. So we would have to do something else uh, than just drilling that maybe. And one of the options you have, if you go over to the 2D milling and click the down arrow, is that there's actually more options in here. So you could select either a boring operation or maybe a circular uh, operation in here. So I'm going to select a circular operation. Again, everything is, is pretty normal, right? So we have already been through most of this stuff already. The tool, it picks the last 10 millimeter flat end mill. I might just pick that for, for this here. Select the hole that you want to use, and you will see that it select uh, that hole there. Um, I'm not going to worry about the highest tab here. Now, in regards to the passes tab, 
you could add multiple passes, right? You maybe want to do that because we just drilled a 10 millimeter hole all the way through, and now we're coming down with another in the middle. So we might want to take this in, in some steps, right, to rough that out. The one option uh, I want to show you here that I'm a big fan of, and this is really where Inventor HSM, I think, is making life easy. Let me just turn the multiple step off. So now we only have one step uh, going through here. Let me just zoom in so we can take a look. You will see that there's kind of like a lead in, lead out on this. But I just drilled a 10 millimeter hole right through the center. If you go over to the linking tab here, be aware there's a checkbox lead to center. Now check out what happens on the screen as soon as I click that. See how now it starts right in the middle of the center. So, and, and it doesn't, you don't have to hit OK or anything. It does it live. So I can just flip back and forth here. That is just, you know, it's many times when you're doing cam, it's the small things that makes life easy. Again, I want to get the multiple tab on. So now what would happen is that the end mill will come down, the 10 millimeter end mill will come down where my, I just drilled my hole and would start milling out this bore. Really handy. So, I'm going to say that that's good and we see here how we kind of like over here in the, in the left are creating this uh, um, history just like we used to inside of Inventor uh, where we where we we're placing things and by the way uh, not that we maybe want to do it in this one here but you can actually just uh, you know grab things and you can roll drag them up and down the tree so that's kind of handy the last thing I want to do to this um, to this here is I want to create the counter bores and I want to create these pockets. So let me just hurry up to do that. Now these counter bores here, I might actually just select a, a two contour uh, cycle here. I'm going to go with a little bit smaller end mill for doing that. Uh, in here, I'm going to go with a five millimeter. So I'm just going to go into the tutorial here, find the five millimeter flat end mill. And again, don't forget, you can always go in and edit these and you can change things in here. You can save them out. Um, there's other videos that show you how to create the libraries and all that. Um, and then on my geometry tab, see again, everything is the same, right? That's the next tab always. I can just go in and select this little radius here. Okay, so we can we can hit that. And uh, I might just choose to do kind of like a two uh, step over. Um, so I, I can I can take a look and see how this looks. And uh, and that should do that counter bore. Uh, right there. Now, um, if I want to go and check that out, if I hit the setup up here and I go to simulate, we could just roll, if we go down to the bottom of our screen down here, we could just roll right over here and maybe I just slow things down a little bit. Let me turn on the stock so we can see things. And now we could just kind of like play through. We can see how it's finishing the boring diameter here. And then we're going to see how it's going to go over here now with a tool and uh, and do that counter board. So don't forget, you can always go over here and quickly uh, visualize uh, visualize this here. And with this five millimeter end mill, I might take in a couple of depth uh, passes. So, you know, you can always go in and right click and hit edit. And then you can go back into the passes tab in here and you could select you know, multiple depths down here, check that off uh, down here, and now you will get that. So don't forget you can do that. To do the pockets, well, the pocket tool path is right in here. So I mean, even though that this is the two and a half axis uh, express version that is free, you have all these high quality, easy of use tool path. I'm gonna use the same end mill as before, and now I'm just gonna go in and select the geometry for that. So I'm just gonna select down here in the bottom of these two here just like that and again here you probably also definitely want uh, some some multiple depths checked and turned on uh, in here so you're making sure that you know you're not completely uh, you know roughing everything uh, out uh, without kind of like stepping it out and, and getting the chips out of there but that really takes everything through uh, machining more or less this whole part here I mean now we do have uh, everything uh, set up to the point where we can start, you know, we we phased off the part, we did all the roughing, right? Um, we have we have finished the outside of the part, we have drilled the holes, we, we spotted them, we drilled them, um, we used the boring operation for the for the high precision, and then we did uh, the counter bores in the pocket. So I really hope that the, you know stepping through this really shows you that you know this is not something uh, that has to be overly crazy complicated 
to to get to to this point here. All right, so uh, let's uh, wrap up this video, and that pretty much also wraps up the first operation of this throttle pedal for the BAC Mono. Pretty cool part, and I hope that you find this video helpful to kind of like, this is how you would approach a part like this, just kind of like breaking it down. And in Vendorator to Sam Express, this free two and a half axis version is really easy to work with. Uh, there's not really anything that needs to be set up, and you can just kind of like go in there and create those toolpaths. Now, uh, the link to the next video should be up here. And also, you know, if you don't mind, appreciate it. You will subscribe to the channel. That will make sure you're getting, you know, upcoming videos. And uh, then in the last video, we're going to wrap it all up. We're going to talk about the job setup, how to really tell um, the, the CAM software, how we have things setting out at the machine and talk a little bit about how you would approach that. So um, hope to see you at the fourth and last video. Thanks.